now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. They're going over like a house of fire. Yes, collecting official challenge of the Yukon dog picture cards is the big thing these days. But here's a warning. Don't be left out. Today's the last day we can tell you about the great new offer made by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Listen for full details in just a few minutes. Summer had come to the Yukon, and most of the men who had gone to that vast territory to make their fortune in gold were busy working their claims or conducting various types of business in order to profit as much as possible before the long winter months returned. But the two men who rode the trail from Elk Creek to Selkirk had other ideas about how to gain some of the riches of the Northwest country. Prospectors have been going to the bank in Selkirk during the last month with their take bill. It'd be a good time to strike. Yeah, I know. We gotta be sure we'll succeed. First, we gotta check on the fact that the constable is away from town like we heard he was. Uh, you heard right, Bill. Fact is, I sent an Eskimo to tell the constable there was trouble at Fort River. Since he's the only Mountie in Selkirk right now, you went up there yesterday. Yeah, that was smart of you, Joe. Uh, when do we pull the bank robbery? We'll soon be there, and it's already afternoon. We go into the bank about supper time when there aren't so many people in there. And we'll be far away before that Mountie the constable gets back. So let's hurry a bit. Get up! Get up! Get up! It was supper time in Selkirk, and there were only a couple of prospectors in the bank when the two crooks, Joe and Bill, reined up outside. Ho! Oh, oh, oh. Ho! Oh. All right, Bill. This is it. What can I do for you, mister? Reach. This is a holdup. All right. Get your hands up. Move back there. I got the others covered. Come out from behind that counter and line up with the others. Hurry up. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Get back. Watch them, Bill. I'll go back at the counter and put those sacks of gold in this carpet bag. Hurry it up, Joe. All right. All right. Move back there. Get your hands up. All right. Don't try anything. All right. All right. I got the gold. Let's get out of here. What's going on here? You can't do this. Get out of my way, you. Oh. Let's go, Bill. Come on. I'm ready. That evening, Sergeant Preston with the great dog King arrived in Selkirk and went to the cafe in search of the constable. Hold there. Hold now. Be seen. One King. Hi there, Sergeant. Hello, Ned. You seen anything of Constable Kinsey? Oh, he's out of town. Just when he's needed, too. Needed? What do you mean? We had a bank hold up here in town. Happened about summertime. They got away with several thousand dollars in gold. I see. Well, maybe you could do something about it. I'll do what I can, Ned. Thanks for the information. Let's go, King. <laughs> Easy, fella. Steady now. Get up there. Leaving the cafe, Sergeant Preston rode to the bank to get further information about the holdup. After getting a description of the crooks, Joe and Bill, from the banker and the bank teller, 
Preston learned that the hold-up men had worn handkerchiefs over the lower part of their faces. The Mountie knew it would be difficult to pick up their trail since so many had gone in and out of the bank. I'm glad you came to town, Sergeant. I've heard great things about you and that dog of yours. Thanks. It gives me hope that those crooks will be caught. I understand your dog is wonderful at following the trail of criminals. King knows his best, don't you, fellow? <laughs> but uh, until King knows the scent of the man he's trailing, he can't very well follow it. So many people have come in and out of here since that hold up. It's impossible to pick up the scent. Then there's no way King can get after them? If he were given the scent from something one of the crooks wore or held in his hand, then King could follow it even through the crowded street. Well, then this bandana ought to help. Huh? It was found just outside the front door after they left. I'm sure one of them dropped it, Sergeant. Now we have something. I'll take that. It'll give King the scent of the man who dropped it. Come along, King. Good luck, Sergeant. Once outside the bank, Preston held the bandana out to King. The intelligent dog sniffed for a moment, and then Preston spoke. Find him, King. Find him, fellow. King stood for a moment, and then he started along the main street until he came to a space between two buildings into which he turned. Then he stopped and sniffed the air. Oh, they mounted horses here. I can see the hoof marks. Come along, King. I'll get my horse, and we'll come back here and go on from this point. A short time later, Sergeant Preston mounted his horse, and he and King returned to the place where the crooks had mounted. Steady. Easy now. Once more, the Mountie held out the bandana for King to catch the scent. And then he spoke. All right, fella. Find him. Find him, King. Get up there. Meantime, the crooks, Joe and Bill, had ridden many miles from Selkirk to a settlement called Bear Creek. They stopped a short time for food and rest. Then they continued on a short distance until they reached a branch trail. Joe called a halt. Oh, oh, there. Oh, oh, oh. What are we stopping for, Joe? See that branch trail, Bill? Sure. But we better push on toward White Horse. If the constable gets back and should happen to get on our trail somehow... I don't think he can pick up our trail. But if he does, he'll naturally think we're heading for White Horse. That's why I want to take this branch trail. Well, where does it lead? It goes over to Mile Creek. From there, we can double back to Selkirk. Back to Selkirk? Are you crazy? <laughs> no. No, just smart, Bill. Think a minute. Well, I am thinking, but I, I still don't get it. Look, Selkirk is the last place they think of looking for us. We already covered our trail by riding in the shallow creek back a ways. Even bloodhounds couldn't follow our trail after that. Say, maybe it is a good idea to go back to Selkirk at that. Sure it is. The town's crowded and fairly big. Put up at some place along the waterfront till I get the boat from Dawson City. And we'll get on it and leave. Now let's get going. Get up! Get up! A few hours later, Sergeant Preston and King reached the branch in the trail beyond Bear Creek. Their progress had been slowed somewhat when they had reached the place where the crooks had taken to the shallow creek to cover their trail. But to an intelligent, well trained dog, it made little difference since the man's scent hung in the air, gradually settling on the foliage along the creek bank as it drifted in the slight breeze. When they reached the branch trail, King stopped a moment, sniffing the air. Sergeant Preston reined to a halt. Hold there. Oh, no. The way you're acting, King, looks as though they've turned off on the branch trail. In that case, I'd say they were heading back to Selkirk. All right, King, go on, boy. Come up there. Arriving in Selkirk again, Bill and Joe rode along the waterfront until they came to a cheap hotel. They left their horses in the stable back of the building, then went inside and spoke to the clerk, who knew them by sight. Hi, Bill. I haven't seen you and Joe around in the past 24 hours. We've been on a little trip, Dave. Uh, tell me, do you happen to know if the constable got back to town? Oh, yeah, yeah, he got in this morning. He, uh come here asking questions because of that bank robbery. Yeah, but I didn't know anything to tell him. Every time anything happens in this town, he comes here first, so I'm used to it. He didn't say anything about us, did you? You know I didn't. I protect our customers. Oh, your, your same room is waiting for you. Oh, thanks, Dave. Come on, Joe. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah? Maybe uh, it'd interest you to know another Monty came to town last night. 
Sergeant Preston with that dog of his. Sergeant Preston? I thought he was in Dawson City. All I know is he come here last night and he and his dog took out after those bank robbers. I thought you might like to know. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Let's go to our room, Bill. I don't like what I heard about Preston at all. Ah, stop being nervous. But I heard about that big dog of his and how he could follow a trail. I forget. We were smart enough to break our trail by riding in that creek. Anyhow, how's Preston or that dog going to know which trail to follow? Lots of people walked in and out of that bank and rode their horses away from Selkirk, too. Just the same. I don't think he'd have left town if he didn't think he had something to go on. Well, worrying about it won't do any good. I think we ought to find someone leaving here with a boat today instead of waiting for the river packet. Yeah, we could do that. Look, there was a barge belonging to the Yukon Mining Company that docked here with mining equipment last week. I noticed yesterday it was about ready to leave. I met the skipper. And I know we could arrange to go with him. Then let's go talk to him now. We can go out the back way so Dave won't know we left the hotel. Come on. A short time later, after leaving the waterfront hotel by the back way, Joe and Bill went to the dock where the barge was moored. Let's go aboard. I'm not exactly, Skipper. I'm coming to make a deal with you about going along. Well, we're moving out at noon. The tug's already got up steam. Can you be ready to leave then? We're ready right now. How much for both of us? <laughs> well, since I suspect you're running out on the law and I'm taking a chance, it'll, it'll be $100 easy. All right, we'll pay it. And gold. Yeah. Let's go to your cabin now. I'll give it to you. <laughs> we're running out on the law, right? Like you said, Skipper. And believe me, that Mountie and his dog will have a tough time trailing us from now on. We'll continue our story in just a moment. <laughs> Fellas and girls, we're sure you will agree with Sergeant Preston when he says... I feel that every boy and girl should love and understand dogs. And you should recognize and know the different kinds of breeds. Dogs are truly man's best friend. So, fellas and girls, listen carefully. Today is the very last time we can tell you how to take advantage of the wonderful new offer made by the swell-tasting breakfast cereals shot from guns. Simply go to your grocer, ask for Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Inside each package, you get two different Challenge of the Yukon Dog picture cards. That's two trading cards, each different in each package. And they're yours at no extra cost. These cards are made specially for you. They're like regular trading cards, stiff back, and have the same shiny, glossy finish as game cards. They come only with wheat or rice shot from guns. And these cards feature actual full-color Kodachrome photographs of real dogs, many champions of their breed. These cards are brand new, different, true to life. There are 35 different ones in all. Think of all the different kinds of dogs you can collect. Imagine owning a collection that includes the world's biggest dog. The world's smallest dog. The world's fastest dog. And best of all, there's Sergeant Preston's wonder dog, Yukon King. Yes, you can get an exciting trading card of King, the real King himself. On the back of each card, Sergeant Preston gives you a description of the dog. These cards give you valuable information about which dogs learn tricks easily or are good watchdogs. Just remember, you must hurry. Grocer's supply of these dog picture trading cards is limited. Don't wait. Today, ask for Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. You'll find not one, but two cards, each different, inside each package. They're yours at no extra cost. And they come only with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Get both delicious kinds. You'll get four cards right off. Start a swapping club. Save, trade, collect these dog picture cards. Start today. Now to continue our story. Hearing that Sergeant Preston and King had left Selkirk the night before to trail them, the two crooks, Joe and Bill, who had doubled back to Selkirk, made arrangements with the skipper of a barge to sail with him. 
It was almost noon when Sergeant Preston and King arrived at the Waterfront Hotel and entered. Hi, Sergeant. Looking for somebody? Yes, I am. Two men, one tall, black hair, and the other heavy set and redheaded. Uh, sorry. Don't have anybody here that answers that description. Sure of that? Positive. Uh, what do you want them for? Robbing the bank yesterday? <laughs> Seems to me you're wasting your time hunting for them bank robbers here in town. I'd say they lit out for someplace far from here. I have reason to believe they're here in town, and what's more, here in this hotel. Oh, I don't know what gave you that idea. My dog went down that corridor. What is it, King? Now, wait a minute, Sergeant. I told you there's no man like those here. Oh, so you trailed him to this room, eh, fellow? I can't let you disturb the guests in that Stand room. Stand that... back and keep quiet. You've said too much already. All right in there. Open up in the name of the Queen. Uh, yes, maybe they're out. You want to know if they're out? Try the door. Wait, King. I have a gun. Come out quietly or I'll come in for you. Uh, you don't seem to be in there. I'll find out. Come on, King. You're right. They aren't here. Closet's empty. They came here today and then moved out. Moved out? Why, the dirty cheats, they owe me two weeks' rental. Huh? But I, I I didn't see them leave. I've been on duty out front ever since they come in this morning. Then the men I want were here, eh? Lied to me, didn't you? Well, I... I, I honest, Sergeant, it was only because I didn't want trouble in the hotel, you Shut see. up. I ought to run you in for trying to obstruct the law. Find them, King. Find them, fella. <laughs> King's turning to the back door. So that's how they went out. I hope you catch him so I can get my money. I'll catch him sooner or later. You'll have to put in a claim for your money. All right, fella. I'll come open that back door for you. Running to the front of the hotel, Sergeant Preston mounted his horse and followed King, who was going toward the docks. Steady, fella. Easy. Get up there. The great dog King unerringly headed for the dock where the barge had been moored. As he approached, Preston heard the whistle of the tugboat that was pulling the barge away from the dock. Hold on, hold on, easy. As Preston ran toward the edge of the dock, he realized that the barge was out of hailing distance and headed upriver toward Dawson City. He stood for a moment watching. I know, fellow. I'm sure they're on that barge. We'll get them yet. Come along, King. Steady, hold on, easy. Get up there. A few minutes later, Sergeant Preston and King stopped in front of the constable's office. Oh, there. One King. Well, Sergeant Preston and King, heard you'd come to town. We're trying to trail that bank robber. We were trailing them, Jack. I know where they are right now. Where? They're on the barge that just left the dock and is headed up river, pulled by a tug. Are you sure? I'm positive. King trailed them back here to Selkirk, and by the time he followed the trail to the dock, the barge was well out in the river. What are you going to do? Telegraph to Dawson City? We'll do that, yes, just in case. But I think they're too smart to go to Dawson City. They'll disembark before they reach there. Now, uh, get your horse ready while I send the telegram and meet me, and we'll ride up river after that barge. I may need your help. All right. Be ready. It'll leave in ten minutes. Good. One king. After sending the telegram to Northwest Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson City, Sergeant Preston and King joined the constable. Then they started along the river trail. Since those crooks don't realize we know they're on that barge, they won't expect us to ride along the river after them. That's right. Otherwise, they might try to outsmart us by getting ashore on the other side or something like that. Surprising to me how you and King have managed to trail them like you have. Credit for that goes to King. I won't be satisfied until we take those men into custody. I feel the same way about that. What worries me is that when we catch up to that barge... How are we going to go aboard if they don't make a stop? Well, think about that when the time comes, Jack. We'll find a way to get aboard, don't worry. Only stop before Dawson's at Indian Creek. Might be that the men we're after will leave the barge at that place. We'll catch up to the barge before it reaches Indian Creek. The tugboat that's towing it's fairly slow. They haven't had much of a head start. That's true. What's King getting excited about, I wonder? I guess he's sighted the barge. Yes, there it is, just ahead. Let's hurry and get alongside it. Get up there! Come get up there! Get. Meantime, in the skipper's crude cabin aboard the barge, 
Joe and Bill sat talking to the skipper and his wife, Mamie. Well, I guess we're well on our way, eh, skipper? Yeah, be, be putting in at Indian Creek this evening. That's uh, where you can get off if you want to. Eh? You said you didn't want to go to Dawson City. That's right. We wait at Indian Creek for the river packer. What are you two men been up to, anyhow? I don't like for my husband to get mixed up in anything that might get us into trouble, Bill. Oh, never mind, Mamie. I'm the one that makes the arrangements about who rides on this barge, not you. Maybe so, but you better watch who you do take aboard. Yeah. Someday you might find yourself sitting in jail ashore. <laughs> ah, Mimi, there's nothing for you to worry about. We just want to get away from someone who's got it in for us, that's all. When we get to Indian Creek, you'll be rid of it. Well, it's all right with me. Well, I'm going to go on deck and get me some fresh air. <laughs> Since we started coming here to the Yukon, that husband of mine's met up with a lot of men that don't do it uh, any go good. Go and take and let us be. They paid us in gold for this trip, didn't they? We sure did. Uh, two hundred in gold. In gold, eh? Huh. Where did two fellas like you get that much gold? I bet you never worked a claim in your life. Now, look, Mamie, beat it like the skipper says. I don't aim to sit here and be insulted. Ha! Take more than that to insult you. <laughs> well, I'll leave you right now. <laughs> As Mamie stepped on the deck of the barge, she walked to the rail and looked at the near shore casually. Then, hearing a dog bark, she focused her eyes on the shore trail. <laughs> Looks like a big wolf running along the shore trail. Be sure a bold one to come. Oh, seems to be two horsemen following behind him. Why, they're mounted. I can see the red coat. Well, they must be trailing somebody. Hey, Skipper. Uh, Want to get a look at a couple of mounties? Uh, mounties? They're riding the trail right opposite the barge on the near shore. A couple of mounties, you say? Holy mackerel, Joe. Somehow they get wiser on this barge. I knew you two had been up to something. Keep your mouth shut, Mamie. This is my business. Hey, Mamie's right. There they are. It's Sergeant Preston, there's that big dog of his. Be able to stop it in the creek now. You gotta figure some way to get off the barge. Are you crazy? How are we gonna get off without a boat? Yeah, uh, you can go over the side, the offside, so they won't see you. Swim for it. <laughs> this gun says that's what you're gonna do. Like Mamie says, we don't want trouble with the law. Now look, put up that gun. I can't swim for one thing. And for another, I don't intend to. Oh, oh. my leg! Quick oh. on, Bill. You uh, shot you my husband. Ready. Help! Shut up, you! We're running this barge now. Get back into that cabin. Those Mounties got another think coming if they think they'll get us. Meantime, on the shore trail, Sergeant Preston and Jack, the constable, rode along keeping their eyes on the barge. They saw Mamie when she first came to the rail and left. Then, when the men appeared, Preston spoke. Look, Jack, three men are at the rail now. Yeah, seem to be looking this way. Something's happened. That shot was on the barge. Yes, it was. The woman's yelling for help. Yes. Let's try to head to that point. The barge will pass close and we can get there before they see what we're up to. What can you do when we get there? King and I are going to swim out to that barge. Get up there! Get up there! Get up. Reaching the point, Preston and the constable drew raid. Hold there, hold on. You want to swim out with you? All right. We'll leave the horses here. Let's go. Better get our boots off. Tug just coming around the bend. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Be sure to keep your gun dry. Let's go. Let's go, King. On board the barge, the two crooks had forced Mamie into the cabin. Then they carried the skipper in and put him on the bunk. <laughs> You want to fix him up, Mamie? Go ahead. You'll be sorry for this. I'll fix you. From now on, you're staying in this cabin, Mamie, so as you can't signal the tugboat. As long as we're out in the river, we'll be safe for a while. Sergeant Preston, King, and the constable swam out into the river just in time to reach the side of the barge as it was passing. Preston grabbed a rope to trail over the side. I've got a hole in this rope. King, come here, fella. I'll get King aboard first. Let, let me help. All right, King. Here, fella. Pulling himself partway up the rope, Preston clung by one hand, and then reached down as Jack, clinging to the end of the rope, took hold of King and helped push him up. Between them, they managed to push King high enough so that the great dog got his front paws over the rail. Then King, with Preston pushing, went over onto the deck. Wait there, King. Wait. Let's go, Jack. Give me 
me your hand, Sergeant. Uh, now, easy, fella. Wait till we get our breath. Where's King crawling? Oh, he's picked up the scent of the man we were following. All right, King. Find him, boy. Inside the cabin, Bill and Joe sat with drawn guns as Mamie sat on the edge of the bunk near her husband, the skipper. We're making good time. Yeah. But what about those two Monties we saw on the trail? We'll lose them somehow. Anyway, they might not be after us at all. We heard that Preston and his dog were trailing us, remember? Yeah, that's right. Oh, well. Don't go with you Hey, it's a Mountie. Preston! I'll settle him. Oh, you don't? Oh, my shoulder! You won't take me, Mountie? While Preston's attention was momentarily taken with Bill, Joe had jumped to one side and raised his gun to shoot. But at that moment, King, sensing the danger, had sprung forward and with a leap grabbed Joe's gun out. No! Take him off! Get him away! I'm getting well, boy. King Joe moved fast that time. These men shot my husband because we objected to them aboard. Yeah, that's right, Sergeant. They paid me 200 in gold to carry them on this trip. I got suspicious. Indian Creek's just a few miles up river. I'll take these men off there. Yes. We can send someone for our horses, and we'll take these bank robbers to headquarters. Bank robbers, you say? So that's why they were skipping town, huh? Yes. And if you knew they were evading the law, we can take you to headquarters, too, for aiding in their attempted hey, escape. Now, wait a minute, Sergeant. You've got to believe me. They, they told us they were just running out on someone who had a grudge against them. Did they, man? That's right. Huh? We didn't know until we saw you two mounted on a shore trail that they were skipping the law. I was suspicious of them, but we really didn't know. That's right. Well... All right, but you'll have to return the 200 in gold. That belongs to the bank. I, I don't see how you found it. King got your scent from a bandana one of you dropped at the bank. And from then on, there was nothing that could stop him from finally catching up with you. You mean that dog trailed him everywhere and finally led you to this barge? That's right. Oh! King sure a wonderful dog. <laughs> he acts almost human, Sergeant. Yes, he does, Jack. And if he could talk... I'm sure King would say he's glad this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. It's now or never. Yes, this is the last time we can tell you how to collect official Challenge of the Yukon dog picture cards. Remember, you get not one, but two of these terrific new dog picture trading cards inside each package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. That's two cards, each different in each package. These keen, stiff back cards feature beautiful color Kodachrome photographs of real dogs. You get King himself. <laughs> And these dog picture cards, 35 of them, are yours at no extra cost. Don't wait until it's too late. Hurry to your grocer before his supply is gone. Ask for Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Get both delicious kinds. That way you'll get four different cards right off. So hurry, don't put it off another day. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the duel. When I was called to Hangman's Creek, I learned that two men had set out to fight a duel. It was to be a fake duel. I didn't know that death was waiting for one of the duelists in the form of a sniper's bullet. Death was lying in wait for me, too, and King was not at my side to warn me. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>